what I've really loved about Juno is that you don't have to know the person personally to be affected by it. We've always felt it as a community and we've handled it as a community. And for having 30,000 people here, it can feel very small sometimes in one of the best ways, but it's still large enough that things don't get too boring <laughs> around here. It's a very artistic community and we really do encourage the revitalization of culture and of language and of the arts, which has been fantastic. And I'm very happy that I get to be part of that um, growing up here. So I am of the Ganakadi clan, which is one of the oldest clans in the Tlingit nation. They were mostly in Klawak, Alaska, like I might have said before. And if you kind of look at the layout of the state of Alaska, and if we think about how Alaska Native people came into Alaska over the, um, the strait and the land bridge, the ice bridge. My family came over 10,000 years ago and they made it the furthest down. That's kind of how I've always thought of it. And that's how I understand it because I want to know, well, how is my family one of the oldest ones? And my clan is the oldest ones. It's because they've had the most time to get all the way across and down and they settled in that area and I've always enjoyed knowing that. And another thing that my mom would talk about is her great-grandmother. So that would be my great-great-grandmother. She only spoke Tlingit. Um, she never learned English from what I understand. She also lived in Klawak. And my mom remembers when she was a kid, she was maybe three or four years old. She would climb up the stairs from my, my great-grandmother's house up to see her great-grandmother. And she said that, my mom says, that love is a universal language because even though my mom barely spoke English as she was young and her great-grandmother spoke Clinket, they communicated easily and they absolutely loved one another. And um, my mom's great-grandmother passed when my mother was five years old and she remembers feeling the hurt of losing her. And she didn't realize that they never spoke the same language. And so I think that has always carried with me is I may not understand the languages that I would hear sometimes my great grandparents speaking because they spoke Clinket to one another. But I always could understand maybe the, the feeling that they were giving off from that. So love is universal and I hope to learn the Klingit language someday. I know that it's offered now, and I feel like I might be at a time where I can pursue that and really get the most out of it and really appreciate the language that is luckily available to learn today in schools. In my thoughts, I, I would say that respect is definitely the most important tradition and um, thing to teach along the way. You respect your elders. You respect the person beside you. You respect the land and what it provides. And I think that that can be applied to anything. If you understand the basis of respect, you can apply that to every part of your life and that will be fulfilling that lesson to its max capacity. And that's one thing I always remember hearing from my grandparents and my, my great grandparents is you respect the land and they would show me how they used it. Um, they would dry seaweed and they would say, you take this much, you don't take more. And so that was always integrated into the lessons I would learn is respect. And I've always valued that. I'm a very pale Alaska native person and so growing up, sometimes what the interactions would be is if I were to say that I was Clinket, I would be told by others that I was not. And I would have that part of my culture kind of taken away from me. But as I grew up, I started to realize that my heritage is not in the view of others. My heritage is my own. And if I respect my culture and I want to learn more about it and I want to practice my traditions, that's my choice. And I may not look it, but I was raised to respect my heritage.